welcome back to my channel. In the second to last single pigment video, we are looking at two pigments that I think a lot of artists tend to overlook. We are looking at blacks and whites, and I'm actually combining them into a single video because I don't have a huge collection of either, and so I think I can fit them all into a single video. So I'm going to label this page and then we're going to get into swatching. All right. Now that it's all labeled, let's get into labeling. So the first step is Schmincke Lamp Black, which is PBK6. It is a very black black. But I'm gonna try and like show some of the granulation in these blacks. Just cause I think it'll make it more interesting. Next up is White Knight's Lamp Black, which is PBK7. I would say this is probably the blackest black in my palette that's a single pigment, though Cosmic Creations Inky does come close. Then we have Roman Small's Vine Black, which is PBK8. A pretty uh, transparent black. It is quite pretty though. Then we have Holbein Ivory Black. Which is PBK9. We have Cosmic Creations Inky, which is another PBK9. But I would say it is a much more black PBK9. Than, ink, than ivory black is. It's like washed out is what ivory black is straight from the pan. Lunar black is PBK 11 by Daniel Smith. Lunar black by Daniel Smith is PBK 11. That makes a sentence. It is one of my favorite blacks when I want a color to like granulate. Then we have Roman Small Aquarius Black. We have Cosmic Creations Quixote, which was part of the Morning Meadows palette last year. And it is PBK 31. So PBK 31 and 32 are Paralene Green. They look green, but they are technically blacks. Though they do look like dark foresty greens. They are technically black pigments. I don't know why. I've never found an explanation. 31 and 32 are black, or look so green, but are technically considered to be blacks. So this is the Roman small version of the same pigment. I like the Cosmic Creations one more. The Roman small version is almost too green. And then the Izzy Watercolors version is PBK 32. And it is much darker. I would say that it definitely falls into like the black black category versus um, or the more like gray green category versus this which looks very very like forest green. And we have whites. I'm trying to make my brushes as clean as I can get it. Rosa Gallery's Zinc White, which is a PW4, is up first. I would say I don't use Zinc White all that often. It's not my preferred white. My preferred white is actually this Windsor Newton one. It's the white I use for highlights and pieces. It's PW6. It's actually their white gouache.
and I love using it as like white out in a piece. If I've made a mistake that I can't lift, it works really well as white out. Then we have Michael Wilcox white, which is another PW6. The Michael Wilcox one is definitely more like cream undertoned and less white. It is almost like a buff titanium. Then we have actual buff titanium by Daniel Smith, which is PW6.1 or colon one, I guess. I love buff titanium. I use it a lot in my beach pieces. And then we have Aquarius Gray, which is another PW6 colon one, but unlike buff titanium, it's a gray, unlike the sort of like neutrally sandy color, and it's by Roman Small. So let's let this dry and we'll go over my favorites. So everything's dry now, and I'm actually gonna start down here with which ones I use the most. So I, out of all the whites, really only reach for Windsor Noon Permanent White Gouache, so PW6, and Buff Titanium PW6 colon one. I reached for the white gouache version just because it's more opaque and really when I need a white, it's because I need a white white. I'm awful at leaving white space on pages, but also sometimes you just like need a white. I'm not a traditional watercolor artist. I don't claim to be. And so a white gouache is just essential to how I paint. Buff titanium is great for beach pieces. It's great for throwing into skies and throwing into mixes and just like muting colors. So it is one of my go-tos in a palette. And then we go up to blacks. So I love lunar black, probably more than Aquarius black. It's just a finer particle size. They're the same pigment, but I reach for lunar black more often. Like you can see the dilution and you can just see like there's more of like the dusty particles, which makes it better if you're creating your own granulating mixes. Cosmic Creations Inky and White Knight's Lamp Black. One is a PBK7, one is a PBK9. Lamp Black is technically more black, but it's hard to find any of the White Knight's pans that are in North America that people are getting rid of in their collections. That's how I got mine. Somebody was selling it off and I knew that I wanted to try their black after seeing swatches of it. So I'd probably stick with Cosmic Creations Inky. It's the next most black black. And really when you want like a true, true dark black, this is gonna be good enough. A Holbein Ivory Black, I don't love. I wish it had more of the darker tones like Inky does. Vine Black is nice. It's used in a lot of granulating mixes, so I'd probably keep it around just because it's my palette and I use it a bunch in granulating mixes. I feel like PBK6 Shemeke Lamp Black was bought for the mixing series. I honestly can't remember though. And I would be interested to try all of the mixes with a different black, maybe lunar black, to see if maybe they get more interesting. I'm wondering if maybe like some of the slightly more boring mixes in the Schmincke series could be like hyped up by using a more interesting black. And then let's go back down here. I don't know that I'd keep any of these. There are so many nice greens that I've got in the green section already that are like standard green pigments. I might keep Kyote, but I don't know if Laura's bringing it back to the shop. It was part of a limited edition palette that I did with her last year. And the other two, like Paraline Green is by Roman Small is just too green. The Izzy one was part of her Simply Birds membership club last year, so that's not around anymore. And I honestly don't know that I've ever painted with this. I have used the Roman Small version and I've used Kyote, but I don't know that I've used this version and I definitely don't love the three of them enough that if I was rebuilding this palette from scratch, they're absolutely colors I would add. So I hope you enjoyed this recap of blacks and whites. 
we have one section left and that's all the natural pigments so things like natural indigo dragon blood all those fun things that are sort of less common in people's palettes but of course i have <laughs> so i hope you stick around for the final part of this series <laughs>